All right, these are geodes, for anyone that doesn't know. They look like rocks on the outside and end up being crystals. It's, it's amazing. All crystals are alive as far as I'm concerned. So these rocks are alive. Uh, that first picture was from the museum uh, here in town. And these are from the backyard. Get close to the house more than the backyard. Um, I've already gone over the sand rocks by the river. And kind of, I've got a good idea how they form now. Um, but that's for another video. This is the geodes. And you can see that they're layered. I mean, these are obviously formed electrically. They're really hard. Good luck trying to chip these. I took out a hammer and chisel and didn't make a dent in any of these. Um, you know, the pock marks, I'm assuming, came at formation. I can't imagine that they're weathered. Um, they are all have all different kinds here. You can see all different sizes, different colors. And it just, they're incredible. Absolutely incredible. So we have sand rocks in Uruguay. And we have these. The geode type rocks. I mean, they're full. The, the ones that I've found anyway are fully fused. Whereas regular geodes are hollow-ish inside. You know, there's some air left in there. I mean, look at that. The, the two layers, top and bottom, and then the inside is just this... It, and they're super smooth. Almost like amber. It, it's incredible. There's chips and all these different colors and stuff in there. And, you know, I can't... There's no way other than electrically that these formed. Uh, so let's go back to the museum here and see what they have. And this is from uh, Artigas... The last word on the thing there is the city out in the west, uh, northwest. And you can see there's a calcium crystals growing inside the ameth amethyst geode. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And to the outside, it's just a rock. <laughs> and you can see my feet there show you the actual size of this guy. And uh, it's amazing how these form. I don't know the actual processes, how it's done. Jeez, unbelievable. I'm going you know, to give a zoom in here on the on the middle section. Right? Crazy. I got a couple more pictures from the museum. And then uh, this is a... They took cross sections of rocks. H how? How are he even calling these rocks? What is that? Anyone have any idea? These are incredible. They're all around the place. They're all around this place. I mean, these are these look like they're from the Artigas as well. Which again is in the northwest of the country here, but I have I have some in my backyard. This obviously isn't a geode, but they're they were lightning basically hit these. You know, I have the uh, I forget the name of the things like in the glass they hit it with the hammer and it catches the electrical bolt. That's the same exact thing. Now these mesas are everywhere. If you've seen the work of Michael Steinbacher. Um, you know, same exact thing. So the flat tops there would have been the connection points and everything below that would have been underwater, which makes sense looking at the terrain. It's like rolling hills and everything. And again, these are mostly in the north of the country and there's a ton of them, big and small. There's, they're all around me and you can see the rocks kind of on the top there. This is a completely separate mountain in the, or hill, I guess, in Castillos, which is in the south southern part of the country, and these are the rocks that are there. But they're the same rocks that are on top of the mesas here. And they're different than the geodes and the sand rocks. They're a third form of rock. And these, as you can see, are on the beach. This is Punta del Diablo. And these are also different than the geodes and the sand rocks and the mesa rocks. We got four different kinds at the very least, and five from that iron chisel rock that I was using to break open the sand rocks. So at least five different kinds of rocks. If you can call these these geodes or even rocks, I don't know. Again, they're soup. They're really pitted. They're re they're smooth. Even this is smooth. It looks it looks like it isn't, but it's very smooth. And I tried to make a dent in these. It's not happening. You would need like a diamond to cut these things. And it's very lumpy. 
and bumpy and fused. And if it were possible to break this thing open, um, it would look just like those crystals from the, the museum pieces. I think I flip it one more time and it should see right there. See, there it was hollow inside and it just kept being formed, I guess. You know, the crystals kept growing, kept growing, and eventually became one solid unit. So, I mean, there is variety. I'm, I can only assume it's based on what these were formed out of. Like, they look melted together. Which they probably were. I mean, I'm clearly no expert, but I mean, this is this is what we got here. I grew up on Long Island, which is a glacial moraine so it's just all smooth glacier deposits of rocks nothing like this nothing like any of these anywhere on Long Island that I've ever seen I mean this is feels almost like glass this guy and you can see there was it must have broken there I think and the the wave went through it and you can see the ripples kind of got frozen into it I don't know. I mean, I, I just <laughs> can't explain it. If you know, please, please comment. Enlighten all of us. I just think it's fascinating. I, I'm, I would have to think these could be recreated in a lab, right? Literally creating life inside rocks. I mean, you can see how pitted they are. And... Holding them up to the sun, I mean, that's it. you can see through it if you shine a bright enough light on the other side. I don't know. Just thought I would share what we got here. So we got sand rocks and these in abundance. Little fused geodes.